In this session, I would like to give you a helping hand about how to plan your day or your time wisely if you are planning to revise the entire dermatology in a single day. Why do I say that it is an easy and a scoring subject is because initially when you see these images, you may feel that okay, you are not able to recognize which image fits to which disease. Without understanding the basics, it's obviously difficult to understand the entire subject. If you begin your day thinking that you are going to revise the entire topics in dermatology in one fine day. Are you just left with just one day for learning dermatology for your upcoming NEET PG or your FMG exam? Don't worry, you are not alone because there must be a lot of students who are going through the same about how to utilize your time to learn this short subject like dermatology in a day and that too utilizing it smartly. So I'm Dr. Jazeer Abdul Kader, your dermatology faculty at PW Medit. And in this session, I would like to give you a helping hand about how to plan your day or your time wisely if you are planning to revise the entire dermatology in a single day. So now let's see that dermatology as a subject, kindly don't ignore this subject called dermatology, even though it is a very short subject. And what is most important here is understand that this is a easily scoring subjects. So this subject which can give you easy marks can actually make a huge difference be it in your NEET PG rank or in qualifying the FMG exam. Now how do we break it down? To break it down easily, the subject called dermatology, uh, why do I say that it is an easy and a scoring subject is because uh, most of the questions they are usually repeated, the topics are much easily predictable and what is the only skill set that you need to develop here is your photographic memory. So why do I talk about a photographic memory here is because if you go through all the previous year questions, you will recognize that dermatology, the questions are mostly image based questions or with the clinical integration. And whenever you get a direct question, it can be based on any of the clinical signs or some of the uh, commonly seen features of some diseases. Now let us see how this photographic memory should work for you. You are bound to see a lot of images. Initially when you see these images, you may feel that, okay, you're not able to recognize which image fits to which disease. Now what is most important here is, if you are able to get your photographic memory or your visual memory working, this not only help for your exam, but it has a much higher retention as well. So now let's see what are the major topics that you should learn. Uh, let us divide dermatology into the basic dermatology or the general dermatology. And also we can segregate the infections part because you must have done that in your microbiology or other subjects as well. So in the basics of dermatology, uh, of course, we have to go through the anatomy and the basics. That is very important. So we will learn about the layers of the epidermis. Uh, how do we divide the dermis? How do we divide the subcutaneous tissue? All those basics is important because without understanding the basics, it's obviously difficult to understand the entire subject. So there is no matter of, you know, thinking about quitting the first part of dermatology, which is essentially the basics which includes the general terminology of various terms that is used in dermatology like the macule, papule, all those things. So all those things are important. So once you complete the basics in dermatology, then we have to go through the appendageal disorders. So you will take almost an hour to complete the basics in dermatology. Then when we come into the appendageal disorders like the hair disorders and all, the most important thing which has been repeatedly asked in the NEET PG as well as uh, FMG exam is the alopecia areata, trichotillomania as well as the telogen effluvium and anagen effluvium etc. So I'll just add those topics as well. So once you are able to complete the hair disorders, then it is important to understand the nail disorders. In the nail disorders, I promise you, you will not take more than 30 minutes to learn all the common nail disorders and it is going to be highly scoring as well. So in the nail disorders, the type of question that you can expect is either there is a question like to identify the nail change or it can be a clinical scenario asking you what is the expected nail findings. So all the nail findings, especially of diseases like lichen planus, psoriasis and all, 
including those whitish discoloration over the nails which we call as leukonychia all are extremely important so make sure that you go through all of them now coming to the glands so there are various glands in the skin like the sebaceous glands the sweat glands and all so it is very important that you know the names of the diseases the common features of all those diseases so we will learn about all those sweat gland sebaceous gland diseases as well as its clinical presentation and what i would like to encircle here is this part that is acne vulgaris very very important so this is going to be a sure shot question be it for fmg or for neat pg so please understand the basic clinical scenario of acne vulgaris along with the treatment part as well very important so now moving to another important part that is a blistering diseases so remember I believe that this is the most volatile part in the entire dermatology because as soon as you study this thing, you may tend to forget about what are the common presentation of blistering diseases. How do you separate them? How do you uh, uh, make a differential diagnosis out of it? But if you understand the logic and if you learn, this is something which you can easily cover in probably 1 to 1.5 hours if you have a proper notes. So just go through our entire discussion in the app and make sure that you come back, practice some MCQs and it will definitely not take you more than 1.5 hours to understand about the entire most common blistering diseases. And by the end of this topic, you should be able to differentiate how does pemphigus vulgaris or pemphigus group of diseases differ from bullous pemphigoid okay so all these things are very important again and coming to the pigmentary disorders when i say pigmentary disorders again a very short topic it will hardly take one hour of your time and uh, pigmentary disorders the main disease that comes to my mind when i say about pigmentary is again going to be vitiligo so just learn about vitiligo and if you are preparing for your neat pg so just remember how the Janus kinase inhibitors and all is important because this is some recent update that has come in the treatment part of vitiligo. So just focus on some of the recent updates in vitiligo and rest of all you just focus on what are the common presentations and how do we manage them. And coming to the infections, the infections of course bacterial, fungal, viral all those things are included. So in the bacterial infections again impetigo is a very very repeatedly asked topic and, when it come, and in infections also please learn about staphylococcal scalded skin syndrome as well. So that is also going to be important. When it comes to fungal infections we all know be it for your exams or be it for your clinical practice tomorrow. Fungal infections are very very common. So for fungal infections again all the types of tinea because tinea can present anywhere in the body along with that the pteriasis versicular and all is again going to be extremely important and along with that I would like to also emphasize on deep fungal infections because deep fungal infections like madura foot or mycetoma and all even the chromoblastomycosis sporotrichosis and all has been a repeat question recently. Now mycobacterial infections, I would say that why do we predict that dermatology questions are easily predictable because this is one topic which you are definitely not going to omit. So in mycobacterial infections especially leprosy is going to be the most important because you all know very well if at all you have gone through any of the previous year questions leprosy was always asked so one mark here is there for sure from this topic so coming to the viral infections again viral infections is easy to understand it will not take much of your time so it just all that is required is a just a easy reading and uh, here the most important one i feel is that the human papilloma virus infection that is the warts the, the uh, clinical warts as well as some of the spot diagnosis like uh, molluscum contagiosum and obviously the likes of herpes as well as varicella infections that is a chicken pox so moving to the next one which again is going to give you one mark for sure is going to be the sexually transmitted infections so when we talk about sexually transmitted infections just tell yourself you're going to focus on two different things 
one is going to be the genital ulcer disease the other one is going to be the genital discharge disease so these two are heavily tested uh, in all the in all types of exams and this one is definitely going to yield you one mark just with approximately one hour of your preparation and that is also very important coming to another one another equally important one that is going to be the papillosquamous diseases so in papillosquamous disease not to mention again the most important one that anybody knows is going to be psoriasis so psoriasis please make sure that you understand the clinical presentation as well as the treatment part as well as any of the important clinical signs associated with this disease and papillosquamous does not mean just psoriasis equally important another topic would be lichen planus as well and this topic also will not take more than one hour of your time once you go through the videos and this one hour is definitely going to yield you that one mark so please make sure you plan your preparations in a very smart way and uh, in dermatology, when we would just uh, go through various other miscellaneous topics, I have listed down a lot of other miscellaneous topics like uh, the atopic dermatitis, which is very important, drug eruptions, which includes the Steven Johnson syndrome or toxic epidermal necrolysis, some of the uh, genital condi uh, genetic conditions like uh, neurofibromatosis and all. So all these are going to be extremely important and you can you will also know that in the NEET PG exam as well as in the FMG exam they have been recently testing you with the treatment in scabies which has been a repeated topic now in the last few exams and not just that some common things like what you can see in acanthosis nigricans some of the common uh, skin cancers like the basal cell carcinoma or the malignant melanoma all these things are going to be important and last but not the least the most important thing that you should focus on is on the investigations in dermatology because investigations including the direct immunofluorescence the patch testing the wood slab examination all of these has been asked repeatedly so in this video what we have done today so you must be feeling that um, there's a lot of topics that I've discussed and how do you manage it in a day? So just trust the process. If you begin your day thinking that you're going to revise the entire topics in dermatology in one fine day, in one day. So it is not something that is impossible because what is more important is to plan your things in a smart way and utilize the time that you have. Because uh, towards the end, like what we can do is one good day can actually change the entire outcome of your exam and always have this thing in your mind always have this 80 20 rule because if you just focus on that 20 percentage which is going to give you 80 percentage of your result so that is the area where we have to focus and that is exactly what i've shown you today uh, highlighting all the important topics because if you just focus on those 20 percentage of those topics for your exam that is going to give you 80 percentage of your results so always remember that is also going to give you the best of your results and remember that you are not alone and uh, this subject called dermatology will definitely will give you five marks from general dermatology and also with the likes of whatever information that you have gathered from microbiology as well as from PSM or from pharmacology that will also give you another four to five marks so altogether, we can count that if you have a good knowledge in this subject, you will be easily be able to crack around 10 marks for your upcoming exams. And I wish you all the very best. Stay positive, stay confident and always tell yourself that you are going to make it. And that is the only way how you are going to achieve it. I wish you all the very best. Thank you so much.